Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to our online and offline webinar. First time we are practicing uh, this kind of webinar. We have people here. Welcome everyone here and online as well. We will talk about our data protection officer program, certified advanced study program at Sankal University today. And later on, we will have your questions, answer to your questions online and offline. You will get also the bottom line and you can ask your question there. You can submit your question. Please say, Stalfacher, Nadia. I would like to welcome you all to our information event of Data Protection Officer. My name is Nadia Stalfacher. I'm the program manager. And this is Samia El Aliyev, the program director. Welcome. welcome. There's just another participant yeah. coming in. Please. Thank you. So, uh, we can start now to our presentation. We will have uh, around 15 minutes presentation about data protection, with the data protection and the role, the position, the responsibilities, skills. Later on, we will talk about the program itself at the University of St. Gallen. First of all, I would like to introduce our agenda. We will talk who needs the, to appoint the DPO, the companies, and qualities and tasks of data protection officer. Why they, uh, our program? Why you have to study in our program and learning goals, what you will learn, target audience, the people who should attend to this course, modules, speakers, and terms and conditions. First, I would like to start about the companies who should need to appoint a DPO. The public authorities and bodies, you know, all the public authorities, I would like uh, to go to the second part. The company who has a core activity consists of large scale of processing of special category of data. That means the hospitals, medical companies, pharmaceutical companies, they are processing large scale of personal data in this case, they have to appoint uh, data protection officers. And the companies who, where the core activities require large scale, regular, and systematic monitoring of individuals. I will uh, explain those parts now. The core activities means, for example, the company, they have HR office and they pro process the employee data. But this is not the key object of the business. But the company, they do HR service. They, they process large scale of personal data. And the core business for them is to process uh, personal data because they make business out of um, personal data. In this case, they have to appoint data protection officer. The, there's another point as well. If the company has like 5,000 employees or 10,000 employees, still they are processing large scale of personal data, and they are obliged to appoint a data protection officer under the GDPR. And the regular and systematic monitoring, that means, for example, the large retail web, web page, if you go to the uh, any web page who are doing the retail business, online retail business, they will monitor you. They will monitor which page you are visiting, which kind of shoe you are looking for, which color of clothes you are choosing for yourself. And they will monitor, they will uh, choose your behavior and process, and later they will target advertising to you based on your behaviors. That means they do this systematically and continuously. In this case, they have to appoint a data protection officers. Or the hospitals, they, need, they are receiving patients special category of data, and they are storing, processing, transferring of the data to third parties. In this case, they have to appoint the data protection officer. So, so the quality, uh, personal qualifies of the data protection officer. First of all, under the GDPR, GDPR says that the data protection officer should have Professional quality, experience, 
and expert knowledge. And this person should appoint the company and should be able to take the responsibility on processing personal data. For example, many of companies, they process the personal data in a complex and risk-based way. And in this case, the person should be knowledge, should have knowledge to uh, give the right advice to the company to be able to manage from IT, legal, privacy, and compliance office to get the right decision for management. Uh, sorry, I forget to show open here because we have offline, yeah, online people, so they can see. It. So the data protection officer should be should have legal knowledge and technical knowledge. Uh, if they have the boss uh, abilities, then they will support the process. They will quickly help the, to decide on the decisions and continuous compliance, including learning from failures. The data protection officer should have of several extra abilities, which is the legal knowledge, and they have to be aware of the uh, European data protection law and all international data protection laws. DPO should know the risk IT the, and have an experience in assessing the risk, risk analysis and to mitigate the risk. And data protection officers should have the leadership skills, which he or she will lead the project's management and able to manage all the professional developments. And data protection officers should have uh, legal, uh, cultural and technical teaching abilities. So P, this guy or data protection officer will communicate uh, data protection authorities, customers, employees. He should able to talk to them. He should able to teach them, to give them right information and uh, awareness, data protection awareness. Under the GDPR, there are several tasks for data protection officer. First of all, data protection officer should inform and give right advice to the management about the process, the processing of personal data, to monitor the compliance under the GDPR, if the all the, if whether the processing of personal data is compliance with the GDPR and all the data protection laws and the policies, company's policies, to manage internal data protection activities. There are a lot of uh, process in the company from starting from the consent management, privacy information, decoder processing, data processing impact assessment, and also data processing agreements. So to raise awareness to data protection issues, training staff conducting internal uh, audit, and incorporate this supervisor authority. If the regulators come to the company, data protection officer is the person to face is them to answer the questions. And the first contact for consumers, all the big companies, if they have data protection officers, they have to publish their contact information on their web page. It should be available to the public in case there is any a breach or compliance from con consumers, employer or partners to reach out to them. So why you have, you have to take this data protection course at the University of St. Carlin? Because our program is uh, combined from data protection law, IT, and uh, privacy management all together. There are many courses and uh, two, three days uh, certification programs. In these programs, you will get only either legal or uh, techni technical information, IT information, or privacy management. There is no program all together like legal, IT, and the privacy management. So you will get the uh, core relevant to all legal uh, provisions of data protection law and data security regulations. And you will learn all the data protection concepts and the principles. Uh, later on, you will see the from modules also that we cover all part of the data protection uh, practice. And of course, you will learn the data protection management and the information security system, cyber security. It's not deep knowledge on cybersecurity and information security, but we will give proper information 
which you will need in the future in the company. So we have the module where you will learn all the regional, regional and international framework of data protection law. Then you will learn data protection concepts and principles, all lawful basis and the consent, legitimate interest. And you will learn how to monitor compliance, data protection activities, train your data protection uh, processing staff and internal audit. And all the essential information and the practice you will need in, in the future in the company. So who can attend to our course? The people who wants to be DPO, data protection officer or data protection uh, specialist in their company. The compliance and the legal professions, they have already background on compliance and the legal uh, department. In the same time, they want to change their career or update their career in data protection area. The uh, IT managers and the specialists, because data protection is part of IT. Without IT, there is no data protection. Without legal, there is no, also no data protection uh, practice. Uh, information security specialist, because information security means data security. Uh, it's part of the uh, system and the management, privacy governance. So the people from information security systems and uh, the specialists in the infosec, they are welcome to attend our course. Auditors and controllers, of course, uh, there are a lot of process under uh, GDPR. You have to audit your system, you have to audit your processing, your third parties as well. Before entering the data processing agreement, you have to audit your vendors. That they are really compliant and they don't have any breach in the, in the past. That's why it's also interesting for auditors and controllers to be data protection officer. Price pr uh, practitioners, that's clear and the other individuals in the company, in the management, in the uh, finance department, maybe HR department, they are also interested to be data protection officers. So from now, we will introduce you our modules and speakers. And please feel free, the online uh, participants, feel free to ask your questions and also from our offline participants, the people here in the room. If yeah. I may interrupt you, we already yes. received the questions yes, please. from Let's an start. online participant. Um, is your program recognized by any supervisory authorities or any programs offered by other universities recognized? So our program is under the University of St. Gallen and the University of St. Gallen is number four in the Europe and number one in, uh, in the Switzerland for uh, management programs. So being under the University of St. Carl, it's already a recognized program. And of course, in the future, maybe we will have some additional uh, credit, credits from international organizations. At the moment, we are under the University of St. Carl. That's all? That's all so far. Okay. Thank cool. you. <laughs> You're welcome. The first modules, we will introduce the data protection law, where you will learn the human rights, and privacy, and we will introduce you to Swiss law and European law. You will learn about the origin of data protection law, institutions, the uh, legal framework of the data protection law, also scopes, material and territorial scopes, extraterritoriality of the European Union law, special uh, data privacy law, and plus terminology, the key definitions, which is very important, and the future of data protection in Switzerland because there is ongoing process in Switzerland for Data Protection Act, the draft of new Data Protection Act. Also, there is upcoming e-privacy regulation in Europe, and it's even more stronger than GDPR. That's why we have to be ready for the future. Uh, our uh, lecturer will be Stefan Weiss. Stefan Weiss. He is the global data protection officer of Civisred, Civis company, and Ursula Uttinger. Uh, she, she is also head of data protection forum in Switzerland and working at University of St. Gallen. In module two, we will introduce the data protection concept. This is a very interesting part of the course. 
data protection principles, data limitation, data minimization, all accountability and the lawfulness of the processing, consent and legitimate interest, data subjects access rights, enforcement and litigation and also supervisor and authority because data protection rights or data subjects rights are related to uh, supervisor authority any data subjects you are processing their data for example he or she is living in netherlands and you are processing his or her data they can sue you in front of the dutch data protection authority the company I mean. that's why it's important to know about the supervisor authorities we have lectures from Norway, Lars Winden. He is a corporate privacy consul at Tele Norge, the biggest telecommunication company in Norway. Then we have Thomas Steiner, head of data privacy at Wischer Law, practicing in Switzerland. And we have Dr. Elis Cortes. She is a lecturer of privacy at the University of the Hague in the Netherlands. Module three, we will introduce you the global privacy law, international transfer of personal data. It means that if we talk about privacy and data protection, it means there is also another law, modern GDPR, but most of the company countries at the moment, they are copy pasting the GDPR. They do the, I can say so that GDPR now is modern standards for privacy. All the third, the third countries, they are trying to copy paste to modernize their law system based on GDPR. But we will learn about US uh, and the Canada privacy law, Asia Pacific, Latin America, in Brazil, there's also Brazilian GDPR, which will come in force next year. And later we will learn about uh, international transfer of personal data. This is part of the business of the companies if you are a service provider in the US or if you are working with cloud computing, Google, Amazon, or X cloud company uh, service providers, then you have to have international transfer of personal data. This is the important part. And Anna Poli, she is a global data protection officer of Chanel in France. She is the professional for international transfer of personal data. I met her professionally in Brussels last year. She was uh, speaking about this topic and I, I thought that it would be interesting if she comes to us. We have module four, let me change it. Data protection compliance. Data protection compliance in healthcare data, healthcare practice, health data, medical data, employment law in Switzerland and the European Union, electronic communication, marketing activities, profiling, cookies, financial data, banks and the insurance companies in financial data, artificial intelligence algorithms, social networks, Facebook, Google, Twitter, Internet of Things. And at the end, we will have cloud computing which is the part of vendor management, third part and service, uh, software as a service. In this module, we will have the lectures, Professor Patrick Van Ecke. He is the partner of DLA people in Brussels. He is a professor at the King uh, College of London, City University of London. And we will have Professor Dr. Thomas Geiser, federal judge in Switzerland in employment law. And we have uh, Mark Holly, National Technology Officer at Microsoft in Switzerland and also Daniel Saylor. He is very, very good guy and a very good friend of mine as well. And he is a senior manager and the head of data privacy at KPMG in Switzerland in Zurich. Module 5, we will talk about privacy management. Data protection without privacy management is useful, useless. That's why it's one of the important parts of it. In this module, we will learn about price program governance in your company, the developing and implementing of privacy framework, privacy policies and templates, data lifecycle management, then 
incident response management data breaches and how we have to answer to the data breaches. Then we will have information security concept, cybersecurity concept in practice in data protection, also ISO and NIST standards. Because some information security uh, practices are based in ISO standards, in GDPR there is no clear view for us. That's why most of the companies, they follow up NIST or ISO standards. In this module, we, we have a lecture from Austria, Nicolas Nagel. He's a senior BPO data protection officer and head of privacy office of Tube Austria, Tube Austria. Then we have Richard Magnan. He's a cybersecurity expert from the US and uh, he's a lecturer of data protection and cybersecurity in the University of Freiburg in Switzerland. We have module six, the last module, uh, which is the introduction to data protection role. The GDPR implementation strategies and the challenges in Switzerland and the European Union in the different member states is the, one of the hot topics at the moment for data protection officers. Then we will see the policies, guidelines, each process, each company, they, ha they have to have different policies and guidelines. Copy pasting other companies' uh, privacy policies doesn't work because each company has specific uh, processing and the business. Then we will have the record of processing, how we will record our processing. Because we receive data from somewhere, direct or indirect, we have to have consent management, proper consent management. We have to prove that there's a legal base and we have to show them privacy information to the data subjects. Then we have data in our company. We will use this data. We will process, we will store, we will disclose it to third parties. When we disclose third parties or transfer in the international, then the data is out of the company. So it is huge business for the companies, huge operations. You have to know where is your data in cloud, in a physical database, who has, who has an access to your data, and under which policies, retention policies they to store your data. Then we will have a risk management, data protection impact assessment, data security principles, privacy by design, privacy by default, data ethics, and third party management. In this module, Knut Mager is the head of privacy at Novartis, the big privacy team at Novartis. <coughs> then I will take some part of this module. And we have uh, Ian Schulz, meaning is a partner of NS Young in Berlin. He is ex DP of uh, Facebook and Deutsche Bank. Uh, he will be with us for risk management, data uh, privacy impact assessment, and uh, gap analysis. And the last modules, actually this is the module seven, but it's between the modules. We have study mission to Brussels. Two days, Thursday and Friday, 20 and 21st of June. Thursday, we will have a legal practice at the Bird and Bird office. They are doing the very good privacy practice in Europe, and they have very good partnership with uh, the European Data Protection uh, Board. The second day, we have legal process DLA people and they have the biggest international privacy team in Europe and we will see the future of the privacy, future of the data protection in Europe. There's like five hours uh, discussion we will have there. That's the modules we have. Our program will continue 15 days, seven modules in six months which will start fifth of April, most of Friday afternoons and Saturday morning. It will take in three places at the campus of executive school, maybe that's it. Then we have mostly modules in Zurich, Hotel St. Uh, Gotthard, in Bahnhofstrasse. And two days we have study mission to Brussels. In this course, you will get certification, which is the first part of advanced study, 10 credits, European credits points from the University of St. Gallen. And 
we have, as you see, we have the teachers and lecture speakers from practice and the professors, University of St. Carlin and international uh, companies. The last point is a very important and sensitive point about the cost. Our course will cost 12,300 francs, including the snacks and the meals, travel, accommodation, our multi of course, to Brussels. And we have 10% discount to HSK and the companies, corporate, we have corporate discount for the companies, minimum two people from each company. So that's all at the moment. And I would like to ask to answer your questions, if you have any questions. And yeah, please feel free to ask any question, any question related to PPO and data protection, privacy practice. Online, we didn't receive any questions. Okay. <laughs> Maybe the trip to Brussels, um, we will cover the cost for lunch and breakfast and dinner because we will have um, a social event at the end of the first day. So we will cover these costs and have, have um, a nice evening together to do an activity and then the next day all lunch and breakfast and breaks are covered too. So it would be just the flights and accommodation. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the study mission, like what was it is about exactly? It's it's about uh, we will visit the law firm, the Spurs and Bird and the mm -hmm. DLA. And we will have specific topics. Mm -hmm. The experts from those uh, legal experts they will introduce us their practice and this protection, okay. and they will ask your, answer your questions there. So it would be like a lecture? Lecture, yeah. like but more discussion mm -hmm. on uh, private protection. Yes. It is possible to visit the modules individually, right? Like I do one module, for example. Or do I have to do all seven modules? I mean, if you miss the first or second module, you can attend the second second edition of the course, but uh, if you are a, a participant of another course like compliance management, you can visit one or two modules. Okay. And I'm a little bit concerned about the technical part of the program, yeah. like because uh, yeah, um, I just see that this cover and the, the module more like. Yeah, module five. Yes. Privacy management. Privacy management, exactly. Mm -hmm. Also, could you maybe elaborate a little bit more on, on the yeah. technical part? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I'm already a data protection practitioner and I have legal background. So, to me, like the, the most important part of, of, of the um, uh, program would be the, the technical, technical part. Side. Yeah. So this is more about uh, privacy governance mm -hmm. because in each company there should be uh, proper privacy governance, strategy, and policies, procedures, and technology. Mm -hmm. And there should be uh, proper people like BP or like you to implement all the process and mm -hmm. the guidelines. And there's also a data, for example, data retention period. Most of the companies, they don't have this policy, mm -hmm. but BP should write over policies implement all the policies in, in the company. And also we have a cyber security concept and information security concept. Uh, without information security, you cannot say that your data is secure. So you will get minimum information, proper information about all those standards. If there's any question, legal people mostly, they are not able to ask uh, questions of information security related mm -hmm. topics. But after this course, I hope you will be able to answer the questions. Okay. But it's not absolutely engineering or information security uh, officers, but you will get proper information to ask the questions in the company. Okay. In the some part, uh, the IT team should help the company to be compliant in security system. Mm -hmm. Then we received some questions online. Yes, please. Um, first, can you please repeat the discount part again? It went a bit too far. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a 10% discount 
for alumni from high school, the University of St. Gallen, and we have 10% discount for the companies who will send two employee of them to take this course, or three, or four. <laughs> <laughs> And um, teaching will all be in English? Uh, I would say 90% will be English. Some lectures we prefer to do in German, but 99% will be in English. Maybe a bit more, I think, no? We have some Thomas teachers Geisel. of Switzerland and yeah. they may prefer teaching in German. Yeah. But yeah, it depends but, on the auditorium. Mm -hmm. If we have mainly German speaker auditorium, then we can switch it uh, German. But the exams will be in English, right? Yeah. Yeah. Should I yeah. <laughs> you can do it in English, German, Italian. Yeah, English, English. <laughs> 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 So, um, is there an exam in Austria? Yeah. 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 Um, is it purely based on attendance? So there will be two exams, one after model three and one mm -hmm. after model mm -hmm. six. six. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have two exams and it will be very easy, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to distract our uh, uh, participants. And yeah, at the end you will get 10 credits CIS certificate. Questions? Um, but could be very interesting, for example, when I'm looking what, what I have work to do in my company uh, is about uh, how to calibrate things. Since actually, for example, reading the, the legal documents, yeah, uh, okay, I can read it. Uh, but then what, what I do is, so okay. for me, it would be, uh, for example, very helpful if there would be, for example, a lot of examples. Since I think the, the uh, the lecturers that uh, are very impressive to uh, the list you uh, showed us here. So a lot of people, a lot of people have a lot of practice. And for example, looking at some kind of documentation requirements. Yeah. And what does this actually mean? Uh, uh, examples, for example, real world examples. Can I expect something like this? Yes, exactly. This is the purpose mm -hmm. of our course. That's why we are trying to invite the people experts from practice mm -hmm. to give you exactly mm -hmm. uh, examples mm -hmm. from their practice. Hey, we have these challenges and we give this a solution. Or they will bring, for example, the privacy notice, one page, two page privacy notice. They will explain one by one what does it mean for the company. It, it will be pure uh, practice space, not just uh, legalized mm -hmm. and small print words. No. It will help you in the future that. Hey, for example, Novartis has this practice, or Facebook has this practice, and kind of stuff, or Microsoft is doing mm -hmm. uh, those agreements, you can follow them. We actually received the same question online. So okay. Okay. Is it you? <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of material and resources like will be provided? Like uh, will be presentations made by the lectures or? Yes, so we will have presentations by lectures. In the same time, maybe we will give something to read. It's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. All the documentation you will receive online. You will have access to the program. You will receive online. You can use your iPad or uh, computers, laptops, mm -hmm. or you can print out. We can help mm -hmm. you for print out. I, I will upload the documents always one week before the course. Mm -hmm. And then if you prefer to print it, you can print it and bring it, or you just come with your laptop or iPad and use them online. Okay. Are you doing this the first time or is this already happened before? It's first time course. Mm -hmm. First time course, yeah. It's also, for example, is uh, the impact is a little bit hard to answer uh, in a sense. Discussion helps a lot, yes, at least but not from my understanding. So, would you say that there is, is some discussion driven courses, for example? Actually, what I would be of interest is, of course, other people <laughs> taking the course, what kind of experience they have, what they, how they do it inside the company, from what are they learning from, from, the, uh, from the persons giving the presentation, but also sharing some kind of experience. What would you say on this? This is a very good question. 
I would say that half of the lecture will be discussion. There will be upset discussion, very interesting discussion. At the end of the course, we will have also online uh, questionnaire. We will ask questions, we will get your opinion. Mm -hmm. At the end, we will see the percentage on the answers and we can discuss all, also these answers. It will be very interactive. There is no monologue in the course. Someone will come, will talk to four hours and will go. No, half of the course will be discussion based on practice mm -hmm. and different opinion. Any yeah. question? And how the exam will be? Like it will be multiple choice exam or? What would you like to have? <laughs> <laughs> we are flexible. Okay. Yeah. It will be easy. It will be based on the uh, lectures and documentations, mm -hmm. presentations, and most probably multiple choice. And it will be open, open book. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. And um, we received another question. How much time will be expected to work independently offline, like homework? And there is no homework. We are not asking the participants to study. We are not asking, but course. we are expecting. Because uh, okay. its <laughs> overall experience is that you will get only 20% from lecture, 80% depends on your performance at home to read documentation, to think and to deliver the projects maybe. We will have some small projects for participants. Yeah, that's all. Um, since I'm coming from Bern, it's how, how many um, days will you have in, in St. Gallen? We have no, uh, compared to three. Six. 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 Yeah, it's, it's written there. Yeah. Only six day, days in the campus, but mainly we've been in Syria and two days in Brussels, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. One more question. How many places do you have for the CIS? Uh, maximum 25 uh, mm -hmm. participants can take place in our courses. But second course will start most probably in October or November this year. So, 25 or? 25, 25. maximum 25, yeah. But we are expecting 15 up to 20, let's see, because it's first time mm -hmm. and we start to promote our course very late. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we will do our best to deliver the best so, course. In the so season. then it's already decided that uh, it will start on April? Not yet. Uh, okay. Depends on the number, mm -hmm. but we are, we are hoping that we will start on April. April 5. April 5, 5 yeah. yeah. And at the moment, it's not clear if we have enough courses. Mm -hmm. And what's the minimum of participants? Around 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody right now, Yeah, then we will start. That's great. <laughs> Have you ever get the, the data protection course or certification in the in the past? We have attended some IAPP conferences. Mm -hmm. Thinking yeah. about getting the, the but, Yeah, that's true. But this is our pure university education, what we have at the moment. It's a, it's a little bit of an open question. Uh, Please. Uh, since, since my, my controllers or my uh, line management will ask, uh, presume, presumably ask this, it's a little bit yeah, of a price premium um, compared to the what other yeah, universities or other car, cars, uh, uh, um, programs. Programs, uh, but what kind of arguments could you give me to to convince them, saying, okay, let's invest this amount of money uh, when, when they, for example, say, hey, you, you, for the same topic, you could get it somewhere cheaper. Yes, I will get this question. Yeah, that that's good. Uh, good question. I would say that if someone asks this question, you can show these modules, mm -hmm. speakers. That you will never get all these people together from Norway, from France, Germany, Austria, Holland. In the future, we are trying to bring more lectures, and of course, it costs uh, money. 
mm. the speaker's fee, all the expenses. That's why we are a little bit expensive and end of the day you have the name of the high scale. And, and we are the I would add that it's those speakers you, you will notice that many of them are directly from technical mm -hmm. like from private from, from industry from Microsoft, Microsoft. You know, Facebook people that have to do the stuff that has this problem right in their hands right now. So it's not like we are taking some startup to speak something. It's people that have the problem. And we are a university, mm -hmm. and the other ones who are offering the mm -hmm. CIS are Fachhochschulen, mm -hmm. not universities mm -hmm. also. And plus, if you check the other CAS programs, mm -hmm. you will never see the legal, technical, and the management all together. Either you have legal or technical, mm -hmm. IT part, or management part. All right. <laughs> We are on time. We are on time, yes. Is there, there any no questions, questions from online? Yes, sir. Sure. 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 <laughs> you made us <laughs> interesting. Since <laughs> uh, also uh, looking uh, from my perspective, uh, yeah, I'm looking for a company doing mostly business in uh, Switzerland. Yes. Um, and this is, I think, is something a little bit specific of this is a rather international orientation. Yes. Um, what you would say, so for example, if I lend uh, an uh, edge, edge case example, Brazilian uh, um, data protection regulation could be interesting, but, but it's a little bit far away. Yeah. How would you say, how would this be uh, usable? Just for Swiss purposes. Yeah, if you are a Swiss company, mm -hmm. but you are operating internationally, mm -hmm. in the future there is a possibility to transfer your data mm -hmm. to Brazil, for example, mm -hmm. or US or Canada or Japan. In this case, you have to know the local regulation mm -hmm. there. If you enter in the contract with them, model contract or uh, binding corporate rules, or just data processing agreement, mm -hmm. then it will help you mm -hmm. to understand the system there mm -hmm. and the system here, and plus we will have a Swiss law. Mm -hmm. From uh, beginning till end of mm -hmm. the course, we will have also comparison with European law and the Swiss law. And it's always helpful to know a little bit about, it's not too long, mm -hmm. it's just uh, one full day, international transfer mm -hmm. and international law, uh, it, it will help you in the future on the scene. Please don't forget that in the GDPR, many times you are direct or directly responsible for what your suppliers do. Usually they are not here, right? So it's good to know what kind of law are you looking at? What do they have to pay attention? Because I have to pay attention to this important. Yeah. So, please. <laughs> I would like to thank you for our online uh, participants and offline participants. Thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for watching and for the questions. And have a nice evening and looking forward to seeing your <laughs> registration forms. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.